Hey, do you ever feel really angry? Like that pent up animal emotion of wanting to shake your fists and scream. Today I feel really angry and I thought when the anger came over me, which has been building for some weeks, I thought to myself, I'm just not up to doing a podcast and I was not sure how I would do my Friday journal later today. And I wanted to not follow through with those commitments. I'll just get my tea. I've got a beautiful cup of tea here. And I felt I needed the space to explore these emotions. And then I thought, no, I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to process my anger while I'm speaking with you. So with your permission, today we're going to look at anger. The interesting thing is that we're animals, so anger is a primal emotion and the purpose of anger is to vitalize us or energize us for fight or flight. The adrenaline produced as part of the anger process is produced so that we can be ready to fight or flight. Now with fight or flight, it's not a reasonable process. It's not a process where we sit down and kind of talk about it. It's a let's go, let's go now process, let's get out of here or let's fight. So primarily, from a primal point of view, anger is about safety. It's about when we used to be hunters and gatherers, wandering the earth, anger was about keeping the tribe safe. So it's a limbic response. When I say limbic, the limbic part of the brain, which is the knee jerk part of the brain, the reactive animal part of the brain. So anger is there quick, let's fight or let's run away quickly and then we can regroup and be reasonable later. So the positive of anger is that vitalizes you or energizes you into movement, which can be good. The negative of it is it affects or hinders your ability to think clearly most of the time. Anger can be motivating and that motivation is good. So with my anger, it's been building over a period of weeks. I'm not going to, because so many people know me and I don't agree with criticizing I'm not going to tell you the exact nature of why I'm angry, but the anger has to do with my children, uh, two of my children being involved in a particular activity. So long story and I'm not going to go into it. But as a response, I have written letters and I've gone and had face-to-face -face discussions and talked through reasonably, explaining, talking, making time, booking appointments and as of yesterday the same issue occurred and I was informed by my children. Because over time I have attempted to negotiate strategize, work through this issue. I felt this time, because that wasn't successful, I wasn't able to protect my children. This time I felt huge levels of dissatisfaction, which was anger. What's interesting about that is that me as a person, as a 51 year old mum, Lauren, I like to control my feelings. I like to be able to look down upon my feelings and I like to choose my feelings because I want my feelings to move towards a certain result which is happiness, peace, um, getting along with other people, having perspective and through perspective we are more likely to gain peace and happiness. So over time this has become more and more important to me as a person. I'm not saying that I'm always successful, but that is the goal in place. 
And part of my spiritual journey is I want to be able to look down upon my life, have perspective, not sit inside my relationships or not sit inside my issues so that I lack the perspective to see them with some clarity. One of the limitations with a spiritual outlook may be that we are working towards detachment. If you look at the complete definition of being detached, there is no attachment. Now there's no true engagement or empathy or love without a level of attachment. So in order to be a successful, communicating, loving member of society, we need some attachment. But in order to have perspective, we need a level of detachment. Does that make sense? It's, it's a journey of mine that I'm only starting to get my head around fully. So in life, in order to give those we love space to be themselves, we need a level of detachment. In order to truly love, we need a level of attachment. So it's walking that line. Now when we get too involved in the issues, the events, the people in our life. Our attachment needs may increase and our personal involvement may increase, which can affect negatively our ability to truly give to whatever situation that is. So one of the problems with anger is it's reflective at times of personal involvement. Anger can be a sign that we're getting too personally involved. What's wrong with being personally involved, you might say. Well, what's wrong? What's wrong with being personally involved? If we are too emotional in that situation, we affect our ability to say, does it really matter? Will this situation matter in one week, in one month, in six months, in a year? Does it really matter? A wise mind will have perspective to see it over the spectrum of time. So an example is a broken relationship. Okay, I'm angry, I'm sad about this relationship, but I see, for example, over five uh, days, over 50 days, over five years, I will feel differently. So to have the ability to look down upon that situation so coming back to anger, anger is our body's ability to help protect itself, our body's ability to help survive in difficult situations. So there's the animal side of us and then that there is a spiritual and soul and consciousness side. We need anger to motivate us. We need anger to help rally us, galvanize us, to rise to the task. But when the emotion of anger overtakes our ability to be reasonable, there we have a problem. So it's a really fine balance. So I felt too angry today. And when I say too angry, the way I define too angry is that I had some limitation in thinking clearly. And this is what I question because as I get older, as I get older, I want to be able to really enjoy my life. I want others to enjoy my company. I want to give to the lives of others. And I want to develop in wisdom. And I want to develop in peace. And I kind of think, well, anger doesn't kind of sit with that. There's two interesting philo philosophies at the moment. One I'm reading about worry. I'm reading a lot about stress and worry because my next book is about how to reduce stress. There's a lot of great research to say that it's not about stressing less. It's about how we see stress. It's not about less anger. It's about how we choose to express our anger. To feel stress, we feel a level of stress because our body is producing adrenaline in order to manage a particular situation. We feel anger as the body's response to address and to deal with a situation. So they have cause. There, there are reasons for these emotions in our society. 
There's reasons we have these emotions in our bodies as a human animal. But it's making these emotions serve us and being able to dissect and unpack these emotions of anger and of stress. Being a spiritual being is not about letting people walk all over you. Being a spiritual being or a conscious being is not about having no boundaries. Being a spiritual being is not about a lot of anger. Being a spiritual being is not about dominating. Can you see the problem there? There is a fine line. Now recognizing that fine line is about standing back and being able to look down upon the situation. Now I feel that today it would have served me better to feel less anger. I would have been able to assess the situation more appropriately. But being a mother and loving my children means that the chance of me producing adrenaline quickly regarding the safety of my children is high. It's an animal approach. I'm like a mother dog protecting my little puppies. And that is an instinctive evolutionary uh, function. But as I get older, I want to be able to walk with a little bit more wisdom. So that's why I thought, how am I going to deal with my anger today? One is, first point, recognize that you feel anger, that I feel anger. Two, recognize, identify, unpack where does the anger come from. The anger is a voice from your animal instinct telling you something. What is the anger telling you? What is the anger communicating? For me, the anger was communicating that I want to keep my children safe and my repeated communication was not working out. I didn't have a resolution and as a result my boys were in a lot, in a, um, a less safe situation and my repeated communication was not um, working out. So I felt frustration and I felt frustration. In a lot of situations, people feel anger from fear. Anger comes from fear. Anger can also come from socialization. So in a family, if the parents or the caregivers, one of their automatic stress responses is anger. A child is more likely to learn that as an automatic stress response. So where does your anger come from? Where does my anger come from? Does it serve any purpose? If so, address the purpose. Where, what primal feeling is the anger um, protecting? So is it sadness? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it loss? What is the underlying feeling here? Identify it and unpack it. Recognize that we can have positive anger and negative anger. Recognize that anger is an animal instinct. So anger generally does not come with a lot of foresight, insight or reasonable thought processes. I also, I myself, often feel a level of uh, remorse when I feel anger. I think it's important that we revisit it and take care of when and where we choose to feel emotions such as shame, guilt or remorse. These are emotions, again, that are there to serve us as human beings and active members of society. So it is good at times to feel shame, remorse, uh, regret, etc. because it can help us to develop ourselves as human beings. But if it is not serving any purpose, then choose not to feel the feelings. Yes, I know it's not that easy. It's not that easy for me. But we need to look down upon our behavior. Identify it firstly. Then unpack it, review it, adjust it. So with me, anger, uh, I at times 
being a mum, I just want to protect my children every single situation. I'd like to follow them around like a bad smell for the rest of their lives. Um, I won't be able to do that. I just want to provide them with the most amazing life. And sometimes that's expressed as frustration because I can't do that. So part of the process is to accept, accept what we can do and accept what we can't do. Accept the feeling we have, unpack it. And as always, 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 always meditate. In all my videos, so many of my videos anyway, I talk about meditation and the merits of meditation. And I know a lot of you think that I'm just this meditating guru. I am full of emotion and the reason I love presenting these videos and these podcasts so much is it's part of my journey. I'm learning to deal with who I am. I'm learning to be the best possible person I am. And it's a process. It takes time. But there is no better way to learn about yourself than by stillness. Stillness is the only path and stillness is a practice, something we learn over time and time and time and time again. Over the last four years, over the last 10 years, but over the last four to six years, I've learned so much about calming myself down because I'm such a strongly emotional person. I'm very passionate about my beliefs and I'm, I'm a full-on character. Now that's been great some of the time, but not all the time. And at the end of the day, if I'm able to look down upon my feelings, explore them, have perspective, have a level of detachment, I'm a happier human being. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Not only that we're happy human beings, but we're helping other people feel happy too. So today I thought I would look at anger. Why we feel it, what purpose it has in our lives and how it helps to motivate us and how it is destructive at times. So let's take a moment now. I'm going to move around in my chair. So sit down or lie down comfortably. We're just going to do a casual little meditation, something small. Lengthen your spine and just start by focusing upon the breath. Inhale in through the nose and exhale out through the nose. Now I want you to imagine that you are walking up a mountain. It's a tall mountain and you are noticing each step that you take. You step with your left leg, you step with your right leg step with your left leg, you step with the right leg. You might stop and look at the view for a moment. It's a beautiful view. You're enjoying the heavy breathing. You're enjoying the outlook. You're enjoying the exercise. Walk with the left leg, right leg, climbing. And then you reach the top of the mountain and you look down at the base of the mountain. At the base of the mountain is your life and everything you see represents parts of your life. So you may see trees or sheep or cows or rivers. Each one represents a different part of your life. Everything you see represents time in your life as well, from birth to death. Everything is small. So there may be a time where a relationship ended or an event occurred which was unpleasant for you. You look down and it's small and it represents one part of your life. What is the value, what is the worth of feeling strong feeling about one part of your life? It draws you away from all the other parts of your life. It draws you away from the beauty. It draws you away from the view. It draws you away from noticing all the other sheep and cows, the relationships, the people in your life. It's not about feeling guilt. It's about ownership. 
identifying the feeling, processing it and unpacking it. So looking down upon the spectrum of your life, identify your ability to learn and grow. So in your mind's eye now, say to yourself, I identify the times during which I feel angry. I unpack these times, I embrace them, I review them, and I move on. I understand that anger may serve some purpose at times, but I am the leader here. I am the body, I am the consciousness, and I choose what feelings to feel, how and when. And the feelings I feel are for the greater good and for love and kindness and compassion. Saying that, my personal boundaries protect my castle of consciousness and I keep my personal boundaries in place for safety, for personal self and for my personal awareness. Breathe now slowly. Slow your breathing down and say to yourself, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Take care, my friend.